All right, everyone. Welcome once again to the Faces of Business. I am your host, Damon Pastalka, and I am extremely <laughs> excited today because I have none other than Veronica Lee Jeans, Shopify expert. Some would even say the Shopify queen. Veronica, thanks for being here today. It's an absolute pleasure. I love coming on to your show. It is very exciting. We have so much to talk about. I'm like, can't wait. Ah, no doubt. And you you brought it up there. You are a repeat offender. I mean, it's, it's great to have you back. And I agree. There is so much changing. But as we always like to start out the show, tell us a bit about yourself start back and kind of give us the history of how you got into e-commerce and shopify and all this good stuff so people can get a, a flavor of of who we're talking with today well firstly i'm from africa and namibia not south africa but namibia born and bred lived a little bit in 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 uh, south africa collected a husband and two children and then moved to holland um, supposedly for six months and we got stuck for eight years. It was fabulous, fabulous. And then my husband said to me, hey, do you want to, you know, he had a couple of contracts here and it was raining and it's snowing and the wind and it was miserable. And he had another offer and I said to him, how do you feel? He says, oh, I'll move in a heartbeat. I go, let's pack, baby. We are moving to America. And believe me, this is the last thing I, I expected. Moving forward, several businesses i've had so many careers i can write a very very thick book but i had a recruiting company very successful recruiting company 2008 big crash mm -hmm. i everything happened and i gave it up i actually crashed the company and all my contractors went back to verizon was one of my largest clients had a fabulous time and i then turned around and i thought okay what am i going to do now you know this is like new career right what do you do huge opportunity so i decided i'm going to sell something online and this was pre e-commerce excitement right this was yeah. the big brands were not online yet at this stage only small businesses so i happened to talk to a sales guy at one of the shopping platforms <clears throat> and you know i've got so much i'm a certified systems microsoft systems engineer one of my careers and i one of the school teachers said to me hey you know you know websites teach the children i go no i can fix your computer i can't i can't do websites and i did <laughs> i did one of those um how to set up your website in 24 hours it took me a week but i managed and i taught them but anyway moving forward again i thought you know i've got this knowledge and he started sending me customers this was so sweet i mean you know it's like you sit there and you go, I've got my computer up and he goes, hey, can you help this customer? Hey, can you help this customer? And I go, this is fabulous. Anyway, that's how I got into the e-commerce side. Instead of selling something, I started helping people. But also, again, you know, I've got all this business experience from all over the place. <clears throat> and I was looking for a shopping platform that had an international reach. And Shopify was the first shopping platform that you could get um, a, a credit card company or a payment provider, international payment provider. And it's specifically in South Africa, which was majorly um, difficult compared to Europe or anywhere else or Canada mm -hmm. or anywhere else, right? So, and that's how I discovered Shopify. I just fell in love because it was so easy compared to the other shopping platforms. It was so easy to set things up, to actually do something and one of the things that I was really excited about is how, well, I'm not really that excited since I write the books, but how progressive they are or aggressive they are in actually listening to customers and their Shopify plat uh, partners to actually implement stuff. So it, ha <laughs> it happens a little bit fast. Like you go, mm -hmm. oh, wow, they'd have, they're doing what? But they do listen. And as I said, I write the books and I have to update them pro approximately every three months. I'm lasting now six months. But, um, <clears throat> and you know, with everything around us changing so much, Facebook, Instagram, we've got TikTok, 
which might disappear, who knows? Mm -hmm. uh, Google is just killing us right now. I mean, is yeah. that, the, as you know, those major updates and everything, and they, you know, AI is, is this, the algorithms, Amazon is part of it. So to, to be a business on, on your own is, is, is so challenging these days that, that it is just very difficult, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's for sure. So you mentioned your books a little bit. Tell us about the, the books, the series of books you've written about Shopify. Well, I started because I got tired of talking about the same thing over and over again. So I, <laughs> yeah. I just, I just jumped into it. I didn't know how to write them. I didn't know how to write whatever. I just went boom, baby. And I didn't have an editor by the way. So my, so, so I relied on Grammarly. <laughs> and I didn't realize that Grammarly changes the structure of sentences. I got this really bad review. This guy said, um, and I'm still remember it. My first book, 2021. He said, "This is a really good book, but the grammar is terrible." <laughs> but anyway, I've learned a lot since then. I've had an editor. And so what I do is I write a totally step for step, easy to follow, how to set up your store. And not just in, not obviously Shopify, but mm -hmm. not just that. I've put in all my experience from, you know, um, e-commerce and domains and, you know, um, um, code, barcodes, how you get barcodes and everything around what you have to do in business. And um, <clears throat> so I do a lot of, you know, um, pro, pro tips. But literally, if you follow my steps, so here's what I found. One of my clients, one of my, uh, she popped in about last year, halfway through last year, probably June, July. We were working away, working away. And so she said, you know how I started my Shopify store? She's very, very big on Etsy. <laughs> she had one of my workbooks, which is like the plainest one, two, three, four, five, just check them off and do it, right? She says, this is what I bought and how I set up my Shopify store. <laughs> so, so the actual, the, the, the abbreviated version works as well. But I'm a very much a, oh, so because my, you know, I've got customers that have no technology experience. They yeah. have no idea about online, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, they come up with questions, does Shopify pay my tax? No, this is not Amazon. This is Shopify. This is a shopping platform, um, you know. Um, how how do I how do I create an order? You know what? Where do my customers come from? All oh, those very very simple things. A guy called me today says, "Okay, I've got these, I've got these payments into my bank account, but they didn't really make sense." Because, so I said, "Well, you know, Shopify actually pay you in bunches. So if you get a whole bunch of orders, boom, it moves into your into your account." So it's this it's those those little things that people don't realize that they need to do. Um it, 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 like, yeah. what, this year, actually this year, what my one of my clients called me, she said, you know what? She texted me. She said, there's another website that has cloned all of my products. Every single product she has got about six thousand, six and a half thousand line items which is obviously you know extra large 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 kids yeah. kids clothes they cloned everything including the shipping insurance so you know it's a cloned website they offer 50 percent discount you don't get the products but they get your credit card so what they did is they registered her domain name with dot shop extension and there's nothing you can do right they own the domain name yeah so so we send a big news, newsletter out to all the customers saying, you know, this is what's happening. Please, please. And she found out from another customer that bought something on there and said, oh, you're offering 50%. She goes, you know, I don't offer 50%. Mm -hmm. So, so that's, that's what happens. You know, those little things to protect yourself is a lot of times when, the, it, you know, you, you, that's where my expertise comes in, right? Yeah. Yeah. Those little things to protect yourself. Well, and uh, you mentioned one that I think is like makes people shudder when you think about it being e-commerce and that's sales tax, right? Ooh. It's 
it's it's like since that changed you know when i was a yes. three four five years ago when that uh, changed yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that's just that's that's a whole nother realm for people and you you think about you may have nexus in states that you don't even know that you have nexus in and they and they can come and and want their sales tax uh you know about whenever they feel like it yeah. uh so that's that's one of the things that comes up a lot but then you look at if you have your own shopify site or any other site it's you know fraud is a huge thing and and just like you said protecting other similar domains yes. uh, i mean i mean even even our company we've we've got a lot of weird domains own that we own mm -hmm. just to, just to try to do that to try mm -hmm. to give away you, you if you're not in it before you don't even think about doing those things yeah so I've I've um, had one of my one of my old clients in 2000 in 2000 I set up my first shop my first store on Yahoo Shops and believe 2000. me this is 2000 right this is like nice. pre e-commerce and so and I had to code every single product by hand manually yep. 3694 products or 96 products that screws and and poles and everything he was a flag uh, seller okay a guy he had a warehouse and everything so his his website was a singular like flags and flag pole.com a guy in florida registered flag and flag poles.com started shell selling flags never mind the pole part but just the flags he made 1.5 million dollars where this guy was making three million with all the overheads. That's how yeah. scary it is. Because and and you know, everything is 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 fair in love and business, right? So one of my little weak clients, I won't mention who she is, she registered one of her her competitors' domains that they forget to, forgot to register, the plural. Mm -hmm. She actually got customers from them. So if this was reversed, this couldn't happen to you, right? Mm -hmm. So all those, there's a lot of nuances that you have to think about. And you're talking about sales tax. It is scary how little people know about business, <laughs> right? So one guy said to me, I said, do you have a sales tax certificate? He goes, what's that? I said, well, <laughs> never mind paying in your state that we, you, we've got nexus. Well, you are doing, uh, he was doing drop shipping, you know, the merch thing mm -hmm. that everybody's into, so easy yeah. to get into and everything. Now you have to be sure that you know where it's shipping from, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's your nexus as well. So, and, and people go, I have to do what? And I go, oh, yes, you've got to be so careful right now when you're doing drop shipping. And it used mm -hmm. to be such a, an easy entry point right oh yes i can do this and i'll drop ship from here and here and i'll i'll be selling all this other stuff it's a total different ball game now and and the states are i would say in the last year two years the states have become so much more aggressive to what are they doing all they have to do is check on websites right and make sure i mean they can there's so many ways to find out where you're shipping from. Mm -hmm. And all they have to do is just look at the websites. And obviously, they're going for the big websites, but they will start catching the little ones as well. I mean, you know, yeah. it, it is it is it is going to happen. Definitely going to start happening. Yeah. And don't, like, don't get into trouble for five dollars. I mean, for goodness sake, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's an, an understanding the nexus too because there are usually limits to how much business you have to do in a, in a region but when you look at some of these states like a new york or a california where you're this this zip code where you ship into is different from the zip code beside it i yeah. mean this gets this this is it's, a yeah. significant thing when yeah. you when you start to scale a business and that's yeah. and it's also why the rise of so many companies that are that can help with the sales tax oh too. there's always business right but yeah. also, if you say, for instance, if you start a business um, wherever you are, and so you have Nexus in, say, Nevada, right? And so, and then you are drop shipping, or your products are being shipped out of Florida, you have to have a sales certificate for Florida as well. 
So people in Florida have to pay sales tax, right? And, and so, you know, with my language, it, I keep saying to people, you've got to pay the taxes. And I go, okay, you're not paying the taxes. <laughs> your customer is paying the taxes. It's just a flow through for you, yeah, right? But it's it your, is. it is your responsibility. Yeah. Yep. And, and I think, I think this really shakes the tree a little bit, you know, it's like a recession shakes the tree a little bit, gets those little, little, you know, uh, small companies go disappearing or the bad companies disappearing because they don't have they don't have overviews or whatever and so it gives other people more opportunities that really want to create a good business yeah yeah so we we kind of got down the rabbit hole a little bit there but <laughs> we and it's great because i think people looking at and thinking about e-commerce especially b2c e-commerce i mean this is this is one of the things that's really changed a lot but as we as we look at this and you look at over the past few years do you think that while there's some of it's gotten difficult some of it has gotten a lot easier for people to get into e-commerce yes i absolutely in fact i had this conversation with my mom she started business she was 60 years old finished with the bank that she's 88 right now so that was 28 years ago. When so when she started a business, she needed a bank loan. She needed to make sure she has collateral and all this other stuff, right? Yeah. Now, when you start a business, you can open a store and off you go, right? It is literally up to you how much business you can do just by being on social. I mean, I have a mm. cigar guy that sells more on Instagram than on his website. That's how wow. he started, right? And so, because, you know, nobody likes cigars and, you know, he, he has a huge handicap. But that just shows you how easy, people literally Venmo him the money for an order. That's how easy it is to make money online, right? Yeah. <laughs> Don't you love it? He goes, he's driving me nuts. I've got all these little pieces of paper. I said, Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll automate it for you. But this is how easy it is to actually do something online these days compared to 28 years when my mom started. So, I mean, it is just, it is, it is easier and also more difficult because everybody goes, yes, I'm here. I'm selling. Uh, when are the sales coming in? <laughs> so that doesn't change, right? Yeah. It's the effort you have to put in to run a business and to make sure that you can actually get some sales. Nothing happens overnight. And so one of the big things as well, what I find with, with say for instance, with somebody that has a corporate job that wants to do something on the side and they can't really be online to do anything, super, super difficult. That yep. takes at twice as long, right? Because I think and let's talk about the big elephant in the room, AI, right? Mm -hmm. Especially with AI. I mean, it's already happening that people have to be online. Your customer has to know you, love you, know you, and they'll buy from you, all that good stuff, yep. especially if you're a small business. Um, but now with AI, I think it's going to become even more difficult to get going than what it did before because so much of it is a little bit fake. And, too, and also a little bit too easy. And then Google, we, oh, we've got to love Google, right? Google is my, is, is my, is my big, my other big elephant. Well, it's actually a giraffe. I do call it yeah. giraffes, since I'm from Africa. They are the guys that are going to go, okay, we've got AI, but if you put all this junk out there, I'll cut you off at the D's, right? And there are, I've actually looked at some websites that are de-indexed. I've never heard of a website being de-indexed, which is yeah. boom, they're offline, right? It's the same thing with um, if you if you tick off, sorry, you know, tick off um, Facebook, Instagram, yeah. Etsy. I've had clients, well, no, some instances where somebody said to me, she was she was doing a consulting um, out two hours with me. 
and she, her business got shut down overnight. I don't know what she did. I forgot what she did, but her business got shut down overnight, $150,000 a year business. Her daughter's business got shut down because her daughter was her admin. Hmm. And so here's another example. Amazon, boom, down. Um, one of my acquaintances is the Amazon guru. I mean, what she doesn't know about Amazon is is amazing. So one of the client that we're working on, his account got closed down because one of her clients, but she runs four, four businesses on Amazon, one of her clients forgot to update their trademark. Oh, yeah. All four got shut down. We have been in Amazon jail for a year. For a year. She literally had to go to Amazon lawyers, not the Amazon lawyers from Amazon, but Amazon lawyers that know about Amazon to actually get this resolved because they, you can't talk to anybody, right? It's just, no. they're not interested. So yeah. that's the scary part, right? That's the scary part. But if you got your own website and you can still sell in your website, even if you shut down somewhere, at least you got, as we said, your own nexus, right? Your own little business. It's like having yeah. your own little shop where you're paying rent and they can kick you out, but not likely, right? Yeah. Well, and that's that's what I've seen over the the thing that's been super cool about being in e-commerce the last, I don't know, five, six years that I have been. Yeah. Is you can see these little neighborhood shops that wouldn't be in business if they didn't have an e-commerce store now. And yeah. they're thriving. You look at it and you go, why is this little shop thriving like this? And you go, yeah, yeah, there's customers in the store, but it's not packed out the door every day. But yeah. what you don't see is that that they're doubling their business coming out the front door with the business that's going out the back door. Yeah, absolutely. If you're not online today, you are leaving not even just money on the table, heaps of money on the table. I mean, imagine, so when I came to America, the first thing in my head was, oh my Lord, the 350 million people I can sell stuff to. This is fabulous. Having lived in Holland, 16 million people, there are 2 million people in Namibia, so it's very difficult. There are mm -hmm. about 40, 50 million people in the whole of South Africa, right? So, so coming to this year is like, oh yes, what I, I have to sell something, I have to sell something. And that's the whole point. You don't, you don't have to even sell overseas, international, because, I mean, if you know, think about Houston. In Houston and surrounding areas, seven plus million people. So I don't even have to go outside Houston to sell. Mm -hmm. It's that's amazing, right? So, yeah. so, so, it is. It is. If you if you run it the right way, and you and you and you persist, right? This this is this is the thing. As I keep saying to people, you don't start a business just to go. Well, you know, after a year, maybe I can do something else. What else to do? You're in business to to tough it out, right? We we know it's going to take time, and that's never changed. Whether whether it's been an online or offline, being in yeah. front of people has not changed. Business 101 has not changed, right? Um, it might it's not even a, it's not even faster. People think it's faster. It's not faster mm -hmm. because you still have to go to the events, right? You still have to pitch up online. You still have to go and schmooze with the people that you that you know around the corner or the local people. And a lot of e-commerce um, people tend to forget the local communities where they can literally get their ambassadors from, right? I mean, this is what, what anyway, both of us, I'm sure, um, since my gray hair is all covered up. But... <laughs> But you know that I used to be the uh, I used to be another queen like the the networking queen. Everybody thought I knew everybody because I was at breakfast and lunches and wine mm -hmm. things and networking and events and conventions and whatever. And so that's the only way that I that you could 
find business is about going out and being everywhere. And it's the same thing that you have to be online. You have to be online and tell your story, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And building that community, whether it's across the parking lot, down the street or across the globe or even across the United States in this case, you know, that's, that's really how you build that business yes. over time. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. You know, and, and when I look at some of these things and, and you, you see some of these people say, Oh, it's easy. You can just start it up and start going. It's like, it takes a bit more work than that, but you know, like you said, if you persist, there's some really yes. interesting things, yes. interesting things that you can do. Uh, and I, it comes back again to, I love how it has reinvigorated some of these small communities because these stores, can, they can, they can thrive. They're in their community. They didn't have to move to say to Houston or someplace like that, where you have a huge, huge population yes. center yes. and they can be good. I mean, for me, there's one I, I'd like to talk about a lot and not that I, that I drink excessively that much, but uh, there's a, there's a liquor store that's out on the peninsula here. Cause I'm North of Seattle. It's out on the peninsula in a small town. This liquor store is one like I've never seen in my life anywhere because they sell twice as much out the back door through e-commerce as they do out the front door with people coming and buying. But if you want to go find a special tequila or vodka or beer, wine, whatever that you want, they've got a 3000 square foot wine cellar. They got, they got what you need. You can find it there because it is so popular online that they have built this just, I mean, you just go in, it's like the Taj Mahal of, of, <laughs> places to find the, the your favorite booze so yeah. and, same, and same, same thing with my cigar guy i mean he literally he's somewhere in massachusetts in the tiny little town has a little cigar shop and this is what he started he said he should have had his head red, head red because it, it didn't he thought it was a good idea but again you know it is it is you can be in this little town and and sell stuff you know sell yeah. make more money i've got this one really successful um a story is the guy one of the guys i met with my the first shopping platform i was on he's he had a um you know when you have the fish tanks and all of that he sold everything to do with with fish but not the actual fish and so he said he was paying six and hundred dollars that was like 10 years ago six and a hundred dollars for rent maybe 15 years ago and he was paying, you know, people, he, all his business is just coming in and out of the mm -hmm. retail store. He started online and he, he said he was making as much online as what he was making, as what he's making in his business. Plus, he didn't have a $1,600 rent. Yeah. So he actually expanded. It just happened to one of his distributors said, we're selling this O-ring for pipes and stuff. And his distributor said, no, I only make one dollar or whatever from this. I'm not going to sell it anymore. He says, "Do you mind if I contact the manufacturer?" And he says, "Ah, oh, be my guest." He retired, bought a house cash in Florida, and is fishing right now. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to love it, you know. But I yeah. mean, I knew him. He was packing a lot of little things of, you know, the O ring. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Um, and and truth be told the you know the mariana thing the the um the weed thing started as well then and it became yeah. so he was in the right place at the right time selling yeah. the right product right yeah and it and it's interesting though know, how these businesses have been able to change and adapt using using e-commerce and in the, in the b2c because it really has expanded markets for them i want real quick though i want to say hello Thank you, Dr. New. Thanks for being here today. And Paul, thanks for stopping by. It's a great show. You know, it's always it's always cool talking with Veronica, that's for sure. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. AI. <laughs> oh yes. What the heck? What the heck do we have here? I I tell you something, I've got a love affair with AI. He's the greatest guy in the world. My husband is jealous, right? super jealous because <laughs> i can't talk, stop talking about him anyway so ai yes ai ai is just it's fabulous 
all I can say it is fabulous for all the stuff that you have to do for your business, especially as a small business. You know, you have to be social, you have to write blogs, you have to write product descriptions, you have to be fresh online. It makes your work that took 10, 15, 20 hours into maybe a five hour situation, right? Where you can quickly crank stuff out and even sound very intelligent, right? <laughs> it's like, what the hell is this woman writing? But, and so for me, I mean, on the back end of, of, um, of, of e-commerce, the product descriptions, the FAQs, the blogs, um, I mean, we have just, it's blown up. One of the things, I mean, I know basic HTML, right? I've always been on the fringes. I can understand JavaScript. I actually did a course in some other coding, but can't remember what it is. So I'm dangerous, right? So, I, But I still do understand where to take it out, what to do, fiddle around with it. With AI, I can now pop it into AI and say, hey, can you code this for me? For Shopify language, which is liquid, which is fabulous, right? And the CSS and make it sure it's mobile responsive. So it's like, boom, where is, I used to sit for days and research and how do I write this again? And so I can just immediately do things myself, which I couldn't do before, which is, yeah. it is so amazing. But because, because it's so new still, you know, and especially because people are just starting to get into it. Obviously, if you've been in the business and you, you business coaching or writing or whatever, we've all been very excited about it. But if you're an owner just starting on AI, getting excited about it, it is very difficult not to actually just boom, pop things, grab things from AI and pop them into your website. Yeah. But that's a huge no-no, right? Because in the first place, if I read something from AI, I go, who is this? You know, this must be written by an idiot because it is not personal. It is very, it uses words that I I have to look up, right? So yeah. try, trying to build your 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 um your content and everything where it actually makes sense to your customers right my my six-year-old has to read it so so that's where you have to look at but again you know it is i can't say how how absolutely amazing it is going to be or it is to actually write content and get people enthusiastic about writing content because every time i i, I do a free workshop on mondays I've got about five, two, five, ten people in there every Monday. And so yeah, I'm, I've been hammering on blogs for years because there's one thing that you can attract people to your website, right? You mm -hmm. pop it out there, it, it comes back to you. <laughs> if I start talking about blogs, blogs, they go boom, 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 they're out of my, out of my workshop. <laughs> they're like, I mean, I don't want to hear. But if they and they have been doing it and they've been they've been steadily writing about it and increasing their content and increasing the length of their web of their blogs the best traffic they've seen is to their blogs which means mm -hmm. that their sales go up as well right because people mm -hmm. pop in they see your products and they and you start selling plus you you're solving somebody's problem and yeah. and but again you know ai i mean just emails you know how hard it is to to get a email header for your newsletter. It's like, oh lord, for me that's the the hardest thing. But now with AI, you just pop it in there, and it gives you several suggestions. And you go, this is not good enough. Okay, give me some more, right? And you immediately, within five ten minutes, you've got something that you can use. And what I do is I always personalize it, or I change the word words here and there. So. AI, people think it's so new. As I said, I did Grammarly 2021 with, with, yeah. my, with my book. There's, I'm, I live on a boat, by the way, if you haven't noticed. And so there's a guy across the road, across the, the, the dock here from us. He's, a, he's a, a software engineer. He developed um, AI 
in 1985. Yeah. That's how long it's been around. I mean, people get a little bit freaky, but obviously, you know, like with anything online, it's like the, um, like e-commerce. In two, I would say in 2011, 2010, 2011, big brands weren't online. Mm -hmm. In fact, I had a Nigeria lady that lived in, um, in, in New York, used to buy sales stuff from a uh, big brand when they do the big sales, pack yep. them up, ship them to, um, to Nigeria, have them online where people will buy them. So, but you know, within two, three years, it disappeared because everybody went online. Mm -hmm. So, so that, you know, as an, as an everything that's technology, it like starts slowly, slowly, and then just does that. Right. Yeah. And it's the same thing with AI. I mean, it's moving so fast right now. Do you, you know, Google came out with um, uh, Vlogger. Have you heard about it? No, Do I have not. Oh, you can create a video now with an avatar that looks natural. They actually move their body and they sound, it sounds, it actually looks real. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, people go, oh my God, you know, this is bad, blah, blah, blah. My point is now, People like, I, I, I can say all my customers, right? I do not have one of them that will go online and do a live, not one, mm -hmm. right? I don't want to be in front of TV, but they have to be because this is how they, how they get to know, they, or the customer gets to know them and feel comfortable and come and buy. But now they have the opportunity to put their words into, into a, a video that they can put out. Right. Mm -hmm. Even just being like a influencer. Right. Mm -hmm. So you have somebody representing your company and they can use that and, and actually benefit from that type of thing. Mm -hmm. The blogger. Yes. It's new, but <laughs> yeah, I've seen I've seen some of that before. It was about a year ago I saw some. It was pretty choppy then though. And I just recently saw some with an advertising company that was this is this is really promising because you look at things like television advertising yes and you look at okay if i'm going to produce a television commercial i'm going to have people in it i'm going to do that it's going to take us edit time it's going to do all this stuff I, i'm still a proponent of the fact that speed surpasses quality at a certain yes. point Yes. And, and, you know, we don't, while we, you know, people that are, that are my age can understand what old television commercials are like, but now when you look at the vast majority of the buying public, yeah. they're used to YouTube, they're used to, mm -hmm. you know, TikTok, Instagram, and that video quality, while the, the, you know, the, it might be high resolution, it's not produced. It doesn't have to be produced. So, we can, if I'm going to do my, my, say I'm going to do an ad of some sort of video mm -hmm. ad and I can generate 10 of them mm -hmm. in four hours using AI that are pretty good, or it's going to take me four weeks to generate one good one. And it's going to cost me $10,000 to do that one good one, or it's going to cost me 500 bucks to do mm -hmm. the four of them. Mm -hmm. Who wins? Mm -hmm. And who and wins? You and you know, it, and they and the videos are getting shorter, so nobody yes. really notices, right? Because you have to get that message in the first first five one second, right? Yep. One second. You have to do something different. And so, if you're not that way inclined, what are you going to do? You're going to you're going to really lose out. And I'm always talking to my customers about take little short videos. You know, I've got a, a lady that um, sells. Um, steel heavy steel brackets that her husband and her father-in-law actually weld in the shop i mm -hmm. said go and take a video of those you know the well, yeah. oh my god it's fascinating right everybody will watch it right yeah. so those little things and it has to be just instantaneous like quick 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 put it in oh here's another one so if, if i don't think if you can hear any noise but if i was in my main salon i have a really old the snow boat really old um, I need to say vacuum cleaner, but uh, air conditioner, really loud air conditioner. Mm -hmm. I can now do a live 
and take the noise out instantaneously. It's called Veed.io. It is, I'm in love again, right? I mean, it's just, it's just brilliant. Or you use Opus to chop your videos in small pieces. I've never done it because it's like, who the hell has time to do that? Right? Yeah, yeah. right? So that for me, it's like, I'm, I'm just like, I've got, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Right? So, mm -hmm. but even, even the little things like, chop, for me, chopping the video up so I can have the people that work for me actually, oh, this is what I need to do. This is what I need to do. That's what I need to do. Or you have, you send it to a customer. You go, hey, or client, right? Hey, this is how you need to click on this and this and this. Because, you know, they, they talk to me and go, okay, how do I do this again? <laughs> Yeah. Because they don't remember, right? They don't remember. Yeah. Well, we got Inger's here too. She said, Happy Thursday. Hey, Inger. Yes. <laughs> I was chatting to her today as well. Fabulous. Awesome. Yes, yes. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Good yeah. stuff. We were talking uh, about we were talking about merch, right? And so I'm, you know, I'm in love with e-commerce. I love e-commerce because it's just business and you can sell stuff anybody can have merch on their website just think beyond t-shirts so if you have a business like inga right and you are coaching and and consulting then you could have you can have journals you could have cups those little things that that it's not really where you're going to make a lot of money but it just enhances your the way the, what you are you're giving your customers more stuff right yeah yeah that's a great point and and something that i don't do well but uh <laughs> but it's just it's true I, I, I come up with so many ideas i'm actually yeah. writing my new book is going to be a little bit different okay okay it's going to take uh, i thought it was going to be finished but it might take another two months i'm writing i had these all these um ideas of and i've been collecting them i've been pinching them i've been curating them uh of how to promote your company right retail and e-commerce so i've actually i've actually created it i'm creating it and i'm expanding on it to say why it's good how to implement very briefly right little bits mm -hmm. and pieces and examples and i've come up to 179 ideas already but it, it is it <laughs> nice it's like, uh, i need to finish this book you know but it's just that you need to know all these little things that you can do with your business and you know when we're talking about local business right mm -hmm. so you're an online you're a business person you're an online business 179 yeah you're an online business uh, e-commerce you have children sponsor the team with t-shirts right now you've got these kids that are going to grow up and earn some money, but you have the parents and the grandparents mm -hmm. that love you because you gave the t-shirts. Um, yep. I mean, we know it's silent auctions, um, oh, yeah. you know, connecting with you, with the chamber of commerce, which I haven't done by the way, but <laughs> not down here, not down here in, in Houston, I did, but it's just those little things that you need to be reminded of of hey you know oh this is a great idea so anyway this is my new book it'll be out in two months i hope i'm, I'm really working nice. hard on it and it's just going to give you lots and lots of ideas of communicating with your customers and sponsoring a tv night or a movie night at your at your retail business right yeah yeah good stuff good stuff well, Veronica, it's always a pleasure talking with you. And um, before we leave, what's the best way if someone wants to talk to you? I mean, because you you are the quintessential, in my mind, the expert that I go to to talk to about Shopify and these kind of things. So how can how can people get a hold of you if they want to? Well, obviously, website, veronicajeans.com. Um, I'm, I'm online. I love Messenger. I've, I'm on WhatsApp um um anyway yep linkedin right. so veronicajeans.com i'm moving from shopify queen to e-commerce but yeah. that's my new my new brand as they say we have to move around and pivot right 
<laughs> <laughs> because I have to sell more books. I, this is all about the books, by the way. So I can actually sell books more on the e-commerce side because one thing I've discovered is Amazon, when I did my first book, Amazon was selling it with all my competitors. And I thought, oh, no, 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 no. So I quickly put out another two books. So it was, you know, they recommended my three books to the guy. <laughs> so yeah. You got to be up ahead, right? <laughs> That's I'm the way thinking. to stay ahead of it. I know, but, right? I know, I know. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for being here today, Veronica. And Veronica, e-commerce queen, Shopify <laughs> e-commerce expert. I want to thank Dr. New Inger, Paul for stopping by Inger for all the awesome comments. Thank you so much. And if you got into this late and didn't listen from the beginning, go back to the beginning, start there because Veronica was dropping a lot of valuable information. If you are in e-commerce thinking about e-commerce and especially if your, your e-commerce is B2C. Um, so just go back and listen to that. Veronica, hang out. We'll hang, we'll finish up offline. Thanks, okay. everyone. We'll be back again later. <laughs>